Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today, I'm at the door of my shop. I'm going to show you how to build what I call the five-star critter cage, which is great for our series on monarch butterflies. You can keep other butterflies in there. You can put a vase or a jar in there with fresh milkweed, or you can put flowers in there and temporarily keep a butterfly or two or rear other butterflies. So let's go in and I'll show you how to build a very simple, cost-effective critter cage that I think you'll enjoy having and using. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's to make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's So to do this project, you'll need uh, about 10 feet of 1x2, about 2 feet of 1x12, some screening, a saw, a drill, eight screws, and a staple gun. So I got all the materials I need to do this project laid out here on the table. You'll need a tape measure and a pencil. You'll need eight screws, about two inches long, long enough to go through the three quarter inch wide shelling board and into your uprights. Ruler, a saw of some kind, a drill, and 36 inch wide fiberglass screening. This kind of gray color for my project. And remember, if you're using tools, adult supervision only. The first thing you need to do is mark out two squares from this one by 12 shelving board. I'm gonna double check the width. It's 11 and a quarter inches wide this way. So I'm gonna cut a square. So I'm gonna mark 11 and a quarter inches here, and I'm going to mark 11 and a quarter inches here. I'll take a ruler and draw a line right through that. And I'm going to cut this, this line out right here. So here's my square, 1 by 12. Now, to make my second square, I can just line this up like this. Draw my mark there and saw that and I'll have two equal squares. So here are my two squares. And I'll uh, set them aside and I'm going to cut my one by twos now. So I want to cut my one by twos 30 inches long. So I'm going to come up here, mark 30 inches. And if you have a square like this, you can line it up and mark across there like that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this now. So here's my 1 by 2 I've cut at 30 inches, and I'm going to cut three more of these, so I'll have a total of four. So here's all the wood I need for my project. I cut two approximately 12 inch squares. This is actually cut from a 1 by 12 so it actually measures 11 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter, and I've got four 30 inch one by twos. Now I'm ready to drill some holes in this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this one bottom and I'm going to just brief easily trace out the approximate locations of each of my uprights. And I want to do this so that I'm sure that will match on the top as well. So I'm just placing each one in the corner and I've marked their locations. And I'm going to do the top the same way. So I'm going to mark this top and I'm going to line these up just like I did on the bottom. And so there's my top. Now I will take drill and I'm going to take a drill bit that's just a little bit bigger than my screw. 
so that the screw will go freely through both of these uh, top and bottom pieces. Just to be clear, I'm going to go through and mark the center where I want that drill to go through. So I want it to go through the center of each of these marks I made. I'm going to drill a hole through that mark. So I hope you can see that I have a mark right here and I've got the hole drilled right here. And I'm going to drill the rest of them. And of course, when you're wear, using tools in a workshop, always wear your safety glasses. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the wooden framework using my eight two inch or so screws. And none of this has to be exact, these dimensions of the wood. You can adapt all of these to suit whatever pieces of wood that you might have around your house or, or what screws you might have. But uh, you can follow this as a guideline. So here's my piece I marked bottom. And you can see I got my little outline here with my hole in it. And I'm going to line this up just like this. Take my screw, put it in that hole. Double check, see if it's still lined up. Take my next piece, take my screw. So, I've got my four sides up, now I need to put my top on. So here is my part that says top, and I've got lined up my parts to it, and I'll take this and set it down on the top here, line this up. And now I've got my frame done. My Cage enclosure now measures approximately 32 inches long. So I cut my screening, which is actually 36 inches wide, so that just an extra inch on each side so I have something to fold over as I staple this back on the top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this roll, I'm going to center it across here, and I'm going to fold about a half inch of this underneath so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go around and I'm going to staple this on all three sides and I'm going to fold this edge over again as well give myself a little bit extra staple edge there I'm going to run my staples across there. So I've stapled the screening across three of the sides. And now i got my front side hanging. So this is going to be my door. So I'm going to line this up right here. And I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut it wider than the bottom here uh, all the way across. So here's my cut. And it overlaps across the wood here. And I'm ready for my last step, and that's to put my Velcro on. So I got some one inch wide Velcro, and it comes in two rolls. One roll has the hooks in it. The other roll has the loops in it. Velcro is hooks and loops, and that's how it works. So I'm going to take uh, this Velcro with the, this will be the sticky side and I'm going to put it on three sides here on the front of my cage. Mark it, cut it, I'm going to peel the protective backing off, and I'm just putting the loop side down to start with. Take the back of the scissors, make sure that glue holds real well, and then I'm going to put a couple staples in, make sure I don't tear that off. And I'm going to do the same for this side and this side. So I'm going to put three sides in and the door will hinge over onto the Velcro like that. So I've finished putting down the loop part, which is the, the soft part of the Velcro, the fluffy part. I added a few staples 
old one here just to make it extra secure. The next step is I'm going to take the hooks and I'm going to match them up here, but I'm going to do it before I take the backing off. So here's the, the hooks, the rough part. I am going to take this, I've already measured it, and I'm going to put it down right across there like that. See that? Okay. So then I'm going to do this on the other two sides. And then after I've done that, I'm going to take the adhesive backing off so that when I fold my door over, it will stick to this part. Now I'm ready to take the adhesive backing off and peel this side off, peel this side off, peel the top part off. And here's the really cool part. Let's see if this works. I take the door and I very carefully lay it right across on that Velcro. And I'm going to take the back of my scissors and rub that down to make sure that Velcro is now adhered to the screen in every stitch, every inch possible. And uh, here's my finished career cage. And so to finish this, I'm going to fold over what's left on top of that Velcro. And I'm going to take a regular stapler and put some staples in here to reinforce the edge and to help that glue on that Velcro hold on to the, hold on to the edge. Now I stapled that, give it a little bit of extra, extra strength. And I'm going to go down this edge, folding it over and stapling as I go. So I've completed our five-star critter cage with a Velcro screen front door. I got screen on both sides, super well ventilated. I can take a vase with water in it, aluminum foil on the top with my milkweed stem in it, to keep monarchs here. If the butterflies hatch out, I can put flowers in here and sustain the butterflies with some real nectar until I tag and release them. You want to give those butterflies at least 24 hours for their wings to harden before you put the tag on and then release them. The other day I showed you how to make critter cages like this. This is a different kind of critter cage. I hope you'll watch my continuing series on taking care of monarchs. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door. I'm switching over from nature in your backyard to trademarking nature at your door. I have lots of episodes on insects and spiders and frogs and salamanders and snakes and plants and all kinds of things. So check me out, check out my playlist, check out the variety of things that I can offer you. My goal again is to engage kids and families in interacting and learning about nature and life science and biology outdoors. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel and share it with people you think might enjoy it. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I want to hear from you. If you make a critter cage, let me know. Leave some comments. And soon I'll have a Facebook website up, Instagram, and we can share pictures back and forth. I'm really looking forward to finding out more about what you're finding and making this site more interactive. Thanks for watching. We'll catch up again later. Bye.